Hey guys, Jack Hunt here again. Um, what I've decided to do is show you a video of how to uh, make an alcohol stove. Uh, so what I have here is an empty beverage container, it's just an aluminum can. And I'm going to show you how you can easily convert this to something useful. Uh, something that you can cook your food, purify water with. I built a few of these before and we'll use this one as a, a reference. Okay, so we're trying to convert uh, just a regular can into this. Okay. And then you can see there's some uh, holes here where the flames come out. The uh, flames actually uh, burnt away and uh, wore out the uh, paint off of the can here. That's why they're little there's little V's here okay and uh, we use the uh, bottom so this is basically a two-piece deal there's the, the bottom and then the top that's pressed in with inside there's a divider okay so this thickness here there's a it's double walled and the reason for that is when you place your fuel in here okay it uh, it goes down we light it in the middle so flame comes out and it heats up the fuel in there and it starts to boil and when it's boiling the, the fuel vaporizes so the, fu the, the vapor will actually work its way in between the, uh, the two chamber or inside the chamber here in this thickness and will come out of these holes okay and then once that happens the flame coming out of the middle here will ignite all these little jets okay and when that happens we're ready to start cooking with this you could use a Pepsi coke whatever as long as it's aluminum I prefer these cans over top of the Pepsi cans because the bottom there's a, a decent sized bubble okay and what that does is it it forces the fuel into the chamber here and it seems to work better for me all right, but you can use any aluminum can for this purpose. All right, so we know what we're trying to achieve. Now I'm going to show you the actual process. I have my Leatherman multi-tool here. Sorry again for uh, kicking the tripod. As I said before, it's a kind of a tight squeeze in here. So uh, you can uh, basically start off wherever you like, but I, I like to start off by taking the uh, the top off. Um, let's see what we have for tools here and and the reason why I want to use my multi-tool is because whenever I go into the bush or in the woods I have it with me um, so I'm trying to use all the tools I normally would have on my person and uh, I'm gonna try using the awl here if you're trying to cut this out with a can that's already been cut all right you may run into problems by cutting your hand because it, it can be sharp you have to be careful and by doing it this way I can bear down on the can and not have to worry about it collapsing on me whereas if I had this cut in half it might crimp and you know I wouldn't be able to do it with just a one can I would have to start all over again so that's why I like to start off with the top And I think I think the all in here. Sorry if my elbow's in the way, but I'll show you once I'm done here what I got. Oops. So basically, I'm just going around and around taking some material off and eventually what will happen is I'll cut right through there's better tools for this but like I said I want to use my multi-tool because my multi-tool I have with me all the time okay and I don't want to use something that I would not normally carry with me the uh, the aluminum is a lot softer of a metal than my multi-tool here so 
I'm not too too worried about dulling my tool okay um, let's see if we can use something that's a little bit faster here maybe I'll just use the uh, the knife blade again be careful uh, you can really hurt yourself doing this if you end up slipping there you go alright now <clears throat> on the inside here of course it's going to be all jagged because I was using a just a simple uh, knife blade to cut into that so I want to be careful with that but what I can do is use the pliers here to sort of round it off all right like I said this uh, this multi-tool is a very high quality I'm very impressed with it uh, it's been serving me well so far and I'm not too too worried about dulling it at this point because uh, normally I wouldn't use my multi-tool to make this kind of stove so the wear and tear would be put on as something else but if you f if somehow find yourself in a bind uh, it's good to know that you would be able to do the job with what you'd have on your person you don't want to make it too tall and the reason for that is it makes it more difficult to light this one here which is about ah here we go look at this multi-tool Leatherman comes to the rescue there's a, a ruler built on here so you can measure and the height would be let's start at the one inch uh, here so three three and a quarter so two and a quarter two and a quarter inches tall I wouldn't go any taller than that because lighting it will become difficult because especially when it's cold your fuel will be cold and it won't be vaporizing as much as when it's warm so in order to light it you'd really have to get the flame two, two and a quarter inches anything more than that is just too much and also uh, there's the other end of the spectrum making it too short is also a problem I found because uh, uh, in the past I, I made one that was as short as possible okay so there was only about a quarter of an inch past the uh, the green lip here and it was too short and it did not work properly and the reason for that is when you fit the bottom piece up into okay you want it to seal now I have no glue no anything this is just press fit together alright so what would happen with the short one is I'd get a flame out the bottom here because it wouldn't seal right so you don't want it too tall because of the difficulty of lighting and also it takes up more room it's not practical and too short you end up with a gas leak at the bottom I'm gonna use the edge here rotate the can and score it right about where I want it so boots that much and the reason why I'm scour or making a score line is uh, as a reference. So when I cut it, I have something to, something to follow. Uh, inch and three quarters. No, no. Yeah, just above an inch and a half. Not quite an inch and three quarters. All right. So that's about where I want it. Now. Use a straight blade again. Now I'm going to cut and make an incision rather right there. And I'm gonna, as much as possible, try to follow my score line. Yeah. This this is um it's not a mean pair of scissors, but uh, it's uh, pretty effective. Find that most of the tools on this model are actually tools <laughs> that I would use for normal use um, but I'll save that for another video all right now this isn't perfect but we're, we're improvising with the tools on hand here 
see how you get jagged edges and whatnot. You gotta be extra careful that you don't cut yourself. Alright. 